This is Brent with Lycans Motorsports. <clears throat> this is an FE oil pump. It happens to be the pump that I have decided to use for our uh, small displacement tunnel port engine. Um, oil pumps take horsepower to, to spin them. And uh, the M57B is uh, an FE pump that is a standard volume, but a little bit higher pressure. The uh, M57 HV is a high volume pump. And then the regular M57 is just standard volume, standard pressure, nothing fancy. Um, as I just mentioned, the high volume pumps uh, tend to take a little bit more horsepower to spin. And in this, uh, engine that we're building, um, if you've been following closely, um, we're just picking up those little incremental uh, bits of horsepower that we can find. The majority of your horsepower will come from your cylinder heads and your camshaft and uh, compression ratio. And, and then once you get that, then you can start adding little bits of incremental horsepower. So uh, things like... Um, pulling vacuum on the crankcase, um, cam tunnels, uh, you know, reducing windage, um, reducing uh, losses due to, you know, trying to turn a big oil pump, that sort of thing. So uh, with that in mind, we have chosen this B pump and I use a lot of B pumps. I use the B pump on uh, Junky Junk, the 352, and um, they have just been proven to add uh, a little bit of horsepower. So that's what we're going to do uh, with this engine. We're gonna try to add a little bit more horsepower. Um, this engine is gonna be turning some RPM and um, to be straight up honest with you, I've never built a tunnel port this small. I know that it has a lot of cylinder head. I know that it has a lot of camshaft. It should want to spin up and especially with the uh, much lighter flat plane crankshaft and the much lighter aluminum rods and that sort of thing it should be very responsive to to rpm so in order to supply oil at higher rpms um, i called doug at precision oil pumps and uh, I use a lot of Doug's stuff, and uh, I snagged a uh, one of his Torrington cam uh, uh, the thrust plate kits that has the little thrust bearing in the front of it. And um, I use his billet stands and spacers for uh, rocker setups with the FE stuff, and I've worked with him to um, come up with some, some shorter stands for the trick flow heads and also some longer uh, stand studs for the trick flow heads for the guys that are wanting to add some spring load and trying to get as much uh, thread engagement as they can from the stand stud. So it's nice for uh, for people in, in, in my position to have people like Doug to lean on and uh, everybody likes uh, you know, having uh, a specialist or an expert in a specific field to turn to if you need help. And um, I've, I've leaned on Doug several times and this is one of the times that I've leaned on him. So um, the what I approached Doug with was that uh, I wanted a little bit more oil pressure based on the RPMs that we're gonna be turning. Normally with the high volume pumps and um, the, the B pump, uh, typically when the oil is hot and everything is, is running uh, in the car or on the dyno, I usually see somewhere around a 75 uh, PSI uh, pre oil pressure where the relief valve opens and, and that's about it. So we're going to be aiming for a little bit more than that and um, uh, hopefully uh, somewhere around 85, 90 pounds of oil pressure. So I talked to Doug and I said, what's the best way for me to accomplish that? And um, while staying with uh, 
this standard volume pump body. Um, so he told me to um, put this pump back together and use one of the, uh, the high pressure pump springs. So it's a blue spring. And when I drive the cup plug back in, not to drive, whoa, come back here, buddy. Not to drive it in as far. So um, we're going to just make it just basically flush with the pump body and uh, just barely under what the pickup flange will sit. So that's what we're gonna do. I've already began to, to take this pump apart. And while I'm in here, um, there's some casting stuff in there that kind of needs to be smoothed out a little bit and i'm on a gasket match some things while you learn but uh, i've got it taken partially apart the next thing i'm going to do is pull this cup plug out which will um, give us access to our, our valve and our spring uh, to do that easily uh, i'm just going to drill a hole in the middle of it and use a little slide hammer and pull it out if you are one of the people that uh, have recently experienced the high volume pump issues from, from melling, then your plug already comes with a hole in it. So um, you don't, this is what you want your pump to look like. You don't want the cup plugs to have a hole. So uh, that will bleed out very quickly. All right, so we're making a little progress. Um, the easiest way for to get that old plug out, uh, I found, is just to knock a hole in it with a punch and then use a little slide hammer to pull it out. But I uh, got everything smoothed out, uh, knocked some burrs out, gasket matched uh, both ends, went back with a uh, cartridge roll, smoothed everything out, gave it a bath. And uh, we're going to put everything back together now, so we're going to use a uh, relief valve, we're going to use one of these blue springs and a replacement cup plug and we're going to drive that in as uh as we uh are thinking to just flush uh with the outside and uh we'll get that done now all right so what i'm going to attempt to do right now is make as big of a mess as i can and uh, we got our pump with a pickup on it and I've essentially made an oil pump dyno here. Uh, got a piece of aluminum drilled and tapped for two mounting holes and then a quarter inch pipe in the middle. And I can screw my gauge in uh, after I get it primed and bled. And um, we can jazz it up with, a, with an old pump drive shaft chucked up in a drill motor. And um, I'm going to put some lightweight oil in there and and see what we get on the gauge I'm doing this for a couple reasons uh just for one to make sure i didn't mess anything up when i put the pump back together uh and two just to double check our our pressure on the gauge now i expect it to be a little bit high uh, in comparison to uh, the goals for for the pump and that's for a couple different reasons first of all the the oil is going to be cold and I'm gonna use some, I think I've got some 520 oil, which was uh, about what I'll be using in the engine, but it's still, uh, you know, it's still cold. Uh, the shop is about uh, 65 degrees out here, I think. So um, oil's gonna be cold. Um, also, you know, this is a deadheaded pump. So in the engine, it's gonna be different. Uh, vacuum pump makes a big difference on things um, you know so we're playing against a couple of different variables but just gonna check and make sure that we're in the general ballpark and um, I pretty much know that when the pump is in the engine and everything is plumbed and running that uh, we're gonna lose some oil pressure compared to what's showing on the gauge especially when the oil gets hot and uh, we we generally see I don't know, about 15 pounds oil pressure difference, uh, maybe a little bit more than that on uh, on a full pull between hot and cold oil. So just off the top of my head. But uh, I'm gonna fill my, uh, whatever this would be called. Um, uh, my goodness, I'm struggling with what to call it. Um, 
glass thing. I'm gonna fill it full of oil. We're going to put our pump and pickup down in there. And uh, I'll probably have to chalk it up on one side to keep it from falling over. But uh, we'll get a drill on it and we'll see what happens. Give me a second to get set up here. All right, so here's essentially how this works. Let's see if I can capture all this on on the camera without killing myself. So well, it's hard to hold it. Considering we're deadheading that pump against the a gauge. Um, about 110 pounds is what I'm seeing consistently. So that's what I'm going to call it. Um, hot oil will probably lose, I would say about 15 pounds on that. And, um, there'll be a, a few other losses as well. So I'm going to call this mission accomplished and the pump works and, um, not having any issues. So, so we will call it quits on this. I've got a lot of cleanup to do and um, didn't make as big of a mess as what I thought I would, but uh, it's still a little on the messy side. But we've got our oil pump situation taken care of. I have my um, I had a factory C8 A8, uh, sorry, C8 AX oil pan, and I sent that off to the guys at Cavco. They do a lot of oil pan work for me, and we're having some uh, different trap doors installed in that pan, and um, a few other goodies that we'll show on a on a later video. Um, and and I didn't have a pickup with a pan, so they're making me a pickup. So we're in good shape with all that stuff. But uh, thank you guys for, for watching. Maybe this was of interest to you. Um, not many people um, spin oil pumps up outside of the engine. Uh, you can make one of these very easily. Um, it's called, if you, if you Google it, it's called an oil pump dyno. And there's a company that, uh, called Percy's that used to make them and sold them for like a hundred bucks but uh, i think i've got like maybe 20 or 30 dollars in this and about 15 minutes time so it's good for checking oil pumps just to make sure that uh you know they're they're good out of the box and they relieve where they should relieve and and that sort of thing it also gives you a a standard or a benchmark so that you know what springs do what what gears do what when you go to the dyno you know what you're seeing in comparison to what you're seeing here so it's a value and um you also know that uh you know if something is is wrong inside of the block maybe you've got to drill through on a new uh engine block oil gallery passage or something like that and you know you're not showing hardly any oil pressure on the gauge and uh, but you know that you had oil pressure when you did, did it this way so there's some, there's some benefits to it. But thank you guys for watching, and uh, hope you all are having a good week so far. Should have some, some cool stuff coming up for you to see, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and those like buttons as well. All right, you guys have a good day.